Now, last year I reviewed the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro with its AMD Ryzen processor, RTX graphics. We know how that went. One of the more popular gaming laptops on this channel. So fast forward to 2022, I just took delivery and have been putting through its paces the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro. Now the difference is this one is running the 12th gen Intel processor, it's the Core i7 12700H, paired with an RTX 3070 Ti from NVIDIA. Pretty powerful stuff. You're gonna see the numbers in this video. Very, very impressive. Now this is not a monumental or revolutionary upgrade of this product. It didn't need a big upgrade, in fact, it's a more of an incremental upgrade with some subtle changes here and there, but I think all for the better. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, this unit has not been released by Lenovo just yet, but I just spoke to Lenovo and it will be coming very soon. Now, it does show a starting price of $1779.99. For those interested, when it is released, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. And it looks like the Lenovo team left me some notes on how to cycle through the performance modes, how to get the most battery life out of it. Pretty handy. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, the power adapter is in a separate box, and opening that up reveals a 300-watt power adapter, although, from what I understand, it does support the 230-watt slim adapter as well. But this is a big boy in terms of this 300-watt power adapter. And you get some documentation as well. Now, compared to the Legion 5 Pro 16 with the AMD Ryzen processor that I reviewed last year, the chassis is basically the same, but the lid design changed a bit. Instead of the large illuminated Legion logo, which was also imprinted on the side of the lid, there is now only a subtle Legion lettering in the upper part of the lid. Now, this is a welcome change. It's a more subdued look, and I think it's more classy. And about two and a half kilograms or 5.63 pounds without the power supply at an additional 1.056 kilograms or 2.33 pounds adds a little bit more weight, especially with that big 300 watt power adapter. So yes, it's not the lightest thing out there, but for a gaming laptop, definitely portable enough to take with you on the go. Now the build quality as it was last year is still excellent here no creaking in anything very solid build i like the design here it's going to be pretty durable as well okay let's check out the port selection we're going to start off on the left side we get a usb-c thunderbolt 4 port and next to that is a usb-c 3.2 gen 2 port that supports display port 1.4 Moving over to the right side is your e shutter switch to turn off the webcam in terms of security and privacy, which you gotta love. And next to that is a headphone microphone combo jack. Next to that is a USB A 3.2 Gen 1 port. And moving on to the back are a lot of the ports you're gonna love here. Let's start off with that RJ45 Ethernet port. Next to that is a USB C 3.2 Gen 2 port that not only supports display port 1.4, but power delivery up to 135 watts in other words you can charge this with a USB-C adapter that you might have I've even charged it with a 65 watt USB-C adapter again not ideal if you're gonna do gaming and stuff like that you want to use that 300 watt power adapter but in a pinch it, it'll definitely get the job done so that's a good addition there and next to that USB-C port is an HDMI port that's great for video out and next to that is a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and a second USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port next to that. And finally, your power port in. That's the proprietary Lenovo port. And I would say all in all, pretty good port selection. The only thing missing would have been nice to have a full-size SD card reader. We get none of that. Not even a micro SD card reader would have been a great addition. 
Now, when it comes to upgradability to get inside, you need to remove the 10 Phillips head screws. And the bottom plate is on pretty tight, so you're going to need to use a guitar pick or a pry tool to pry it open. And you want to be careful. It's on pretty tight. So take your time, work your way around the edges, and you'll be able to get in. Now, once you do get the lid off, there are some things here to upgrade, of course, which are always welcome. Now, the good news is there are two SOTUM slots for you to upgrade as far as the RAM is concerned. So that means there's a lot of upgradability here. You can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, it's DDR5 4800 RAM running in dual channel mode. And again, like I said, there are two slots here. My review unit that Lenovo sent has 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight in each slot, and it's working pretty well so far. But one thing you'll notice is it's the rank 16, not the faster rank 8 RAM that we'd like to see. It's pretty interesting. But to be honest, I didn't notice any slow-ups or hiccups due to the fact that it has rank 16 RAM. So at the end of the day, it really is a non-factor. Now, when it comes to storage, the review unit that Lenovo sent over has 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And judging by these reads and writes, these are excellent, excellent results. There is no doubt about it. I mean, 6739 for the read and 4425 for the write are simply blazingly fast. And the great news is there's a second slot for you to expand out even more storage, which you gotta love. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't have Wi-Fi 6E, which I would have liked to have seen. It still has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. But the good news is that it's slotted in. That means if you want to swap it out for Wi-Fi 6E, you have that option. Now, as far as the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, they both are working well. I've had no issues whatsoever. I've gotten good speeds and good connections on both. No issues, again, on those fronts. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has an 80 watt hour battery. And when I ran my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, it did five hours and 49 minutes, which was not quite as good as the Legion 5 Pro with that AMD Ryzen processor that I reviewed last year, which did six hours and 18 minutes. And it didn't do quite as well as the Asus ROG G14 here for 2022 that I recently reviewed. That did 12 hours and two minutes on this same test, but it did outpace one that I'm going to review in the next couple of days, so stay tuned. That would be the Alienware X17R2, and that didn't do quite as well. We'll get into that in that full review. That will be dropping the next couple of days. But overall, in real-world mixed usage on this Legion 5i Pro, you can expect four to five hours of real-world mixed usage. And of course, if you're going to game on battery, you can only expect anywhere from an hour to hour and a half at most if you're lucky. But if you do need to plug in, the supplied 300 watt power adapter does support rapid charge, giving you 80% in about 22 minutes and a full charge in an hour and 45 minutes. That's pretty good. All right, let's get into the display. And the one that they sent me from Lenovo has a 16 inch display, of course. It's a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's an IPS display with 165 hertz refresh rate. And of course it has that 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's also a matte display. That means there's no glare reflection that you have to contend with, which is really great, especially if you're gaming or if you're doing some work during business hours, of course. But this is a really nice display. Now they claim this will get up to 500 nits in terms of brightness. I actually measured 500 nits on the dot. So pretty accurate in their description of how bright it gets. So you're going to be able to use this in both indoor and outdoor scenarios. Now, watching movies on this has been great. Remember, it has HDR on this. So watching high dynamic range content in YouTube, Netflix, Amazon has actually worked out really well. Now, it also is G-Sync supported. So when you're gaming, you're going to have better enhanced gameplay. And of course, having that 165 hertz refresh rate with the three millisecond response time, it's going to enhance that gaming fluid experience that you'd want. Very smooth. That's exactly what you're looking for, especially in a gaming laptop. Now you're looking at some pretty deep blacks, good white point, decent contrast, 1,000 to 1, which is good, and a Delta E score of 1.36. Remember, anything below 2 means this will be a color accurate display. This doesn't disappoint in that department. Now as far as the coverage of the color gamut, 100% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, 74% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 69% NTSC. So if you're a content creator, there are better choices out there. Again, this is a gaming monitor really on the sense on this so really what you're looking for is higher coverage although this is pretty decent but there again are better content creation displays out there that's for sure 
But don't get me wrong, this will definitely get the job done in a pinch when you need to do some video editing or color grading. It will be okay in that regard. Not the best, but definitely serviceable. So this is the brand new Lenovo Legion 5i here for 2022. It's got that 12th gen Core i7, 12700H paired with an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti. And what we're looking at here is a 720p webcam. There is a shutter switch for those that want more privacy and security, you have it. Didn't go with the 1080p webcam. Not surprised because it is a gaming laptop first and foremost, but it would have been nice to have 1080p. Seven, this is not a bad for a 720p. I would say it's certainly passable to do Zoom calls and whatever you need. But again, the focus here is gaming with this uh, beautiful 2.5K 165 Hertz display. But I'm curious to know what you think about the video and the audio quality. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, one thing to note, this is not an IR camera, so you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. And I don't believe there's any fingerprint scanner either. Nope, I don't see one on the keyboard. So it's something to be aware of as well. Okay, let's talk about performance. And this Legion 5i Pro here for 2022 is running the Core i7 12700H processor paired with that RTX 3070 Ti. Now, this 3070 Ti has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory, and it also has a TDP of 150 watts. So, really good performance, as you can see from these numbers. PC Mark 10, which is a good indicator of everyday use, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, video conferencing, had a very high score of 7763. The Geekbench 5 did really well, both the multi core and the single core scores. Really impressive stuff. Cinebench scores. Really great numbers indeed. And of course, the graphics on that 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy scores, really impressive indeed. And to illustrate how impressive this multi-core performance is, here it is against some of its competition. And as you can see, the Legion 5i Pro did better than the Apple MacBook Pro 14 running the M1 Max chip. That's pretty impressive. It didn't do quite as well as the Alienware X17 R2 for 2022. That's the one with the Core i9-12900HK. That I will be reviewing the next couple of days. Stay tuned for that. And the ROG Zephyrus G14 with its Ryzen 9 6900HS did 9946. Not quite as well as this Legion 5i Pro. Pretty impressive indeed by Intel. And of course, first and foremost, this is a gaming laptop and it did really well on some of the more popular titles. Check out Cyberpunk 2077 with its 96 frames per second in the high 1080p gaming, or if you bump it up to QHD, it did 62 frames per second. Definitely very playable frame rates. Far Cry 5, GTA 5, Dota 2 Reborn, The Witcher 3, getting some impressive frame rates, impressive gameplay, and having that 165 hertz refresh rate on this review view unit with its QHD plus resolution makes it for a very smooth and fluid gameplay which you gotta love and it's a matte display as I mentioned so you don't get that glare and reflections so gaming has been great on this Legion 5i Pro and that's its main thing that's what you want to do with it but of course for everyday use such as Microsoft Office email web browsing consuming media on this watching Netflix Amazon and YouTube have all been great performance out of this 12th gen processor has been very very good now, as I mentioned earlier, you get the GeForce RTX 3070 Ti from NVIDIA, which includes the Advanced Optimus, which is a dynamic MUX switch, which certainly helps out with performance when you want to go with the dedicated discrete graphics or with the hybrid mode, which allows you to use the mix between the integrated and discrete graphics. So I like having that MUX switch here, gives you some more options when it comes to gaming. Now, one thing I did notice is under heavy load when you're gaming and things like that, I noticed the surface temperatures can get pretty odd, especially on the bottom where I don't think you want to use this on your lap when you're gaming or doing things like that. I would use it on a desk or a table. Not too crazy, but it definitely gets up there in the 50s. So I definitely would uh, watch out for that. And I love the fact that hitting the function plus the Q key cycles through the difference performance mode. Now the silent mode, you can expect a 30 to 40% decrease in performance, but it remains very quiet so you can get work done. And it's perfectly fine for doing Microsoft Office email, web browsing, stuff like that. And then of course there's a balance mode, which allows a little bit of a blend between the two, but you will notice the fans ramp up every now and then. And then of course in the performance mode, that's where you really hear the fans. Let's give it a listen in terms of that performance mode as far as the fan noise is concerned.
Now, it will reach a core temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, so it does get quite warm in that core temperature, and it doesn't show much throttling, so it does maintain very good clock speeds, very good performance, and as a result, you're seeing really good playable frame rates on those popular titles, as I showed you earlier. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. And this is as far back as the display will go. It's not 180 degrees like other laptops in the Lenovo lines, but it goes back far enough to give you a proper viewing angle. And we have a pretty nice keyboard here. It's actually really good. I like the key travel on it, and I also like the tactility of it. Feels really good for extended periods of typing. There's also a numpad here for those that want to crunch numbers when they're not gaming during business hours. That will certainly help out some of you. And of course, having that numpad moves the touchpad over to the left. You got to adjust a little bit, but I think at this point, we're used to this on a lot of these gaming laptops and a lot of these 16 inch laptops that are out in the wild. So I don't think that's an issue at all. You get used to it pretty quickly. And for those that like the RGB lighting, you have a lot of customization options in the settings and it gives a nice look, of course. You don't have to go with that, but that is an option you have for those that like RGB lighting. And I thought the touchpad was pretty responsive as well. It's a precision touchpad and I thought two finger scrolling was smooth and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front. Now, when it comes to the audio, there are two two-watt speakers. They're located towards the front of the unit, and it has the Nymec app, which helps improve the sound quality. Without it, it's a little bit tinny, but when you adjust the settings, it gets a little bit more richer, a little bit more full. Now, let's compare it to the best-in-class speakers that are found on the 2019 MacBook Pro 16. It's a little bit unfair. It's that much better. However, for a Windows gaming laptop, this is actually pretty good. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro 16 Gen 7 here for 2022? And I'm impressed. Now, this is not a huge upgrade over last year's model. So if you have last year's model and you don't care to upgrade to the 12th gen processor, then I see, I think you're okay. You don't need to spend the extra money. Although if you're coming from an older laptop, a gaming laptop, you want to upgrade, this is a good choice because I think the price to performance ratio is good. Again, this hasn't been released yet, but with a starting price of about $1,750. And the way Lenovo runs sales over the course of time, this is a great choice. Now, I like the great gaming performance, especially with that pairing of that 12th gen processor, along with the RTX 3070 Ti. I thought the numbers were looking good. Fast PCIe 4 SSD speeds, that 16 inch WQHD display, it's 165 Hertz, great for gaming. Good port selection, as I mentioned, with the exception of no SD card reader. Two RAM slots, two SSD slots accessible to the user for upgradability, expansion. You got to love that. Comfortable keyboard with a numpad. Good audio from the speakers, although not quite as good as the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which is the best in the business. Uh, the negatives here, loud fans in the performance mode, which is not too unexpected. But in the other modes, it was very tempered and actually worked out pretty well. High surface temperatures, uh, when you are gaming, running it under heavy load, it will get kind of hot. And of course, the shorter battery life than last gen is not great here. Although not terrible, it was not good either. So something to be aware of. But a gaming laptops in general don't give great battery life. But I think they've hit a home run here once again. Again, a more of incremental upgrade, not a revolutionary upgrade. And I like what they did with the design language, toning down the logo and all that stuff. I think it's a good move and overall good aesthetics. I'm gonna give this a score of 87%, making the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro 16 Gen 7 here for 2022, definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Legion 5i Pro? 
Very nice build quality. You can see the change in the logo, a little bit more subtle, a little bit more subdued, and I think that's a change for the better. Uh, pretty nice overall package. Not the lightest 16-inch gaming laptop out there, of course, but portable enough to take with you on the go. That 300-watt power adapter is a big boy as well, adding almost two pounds to the package. So, you know, understand what you're getting into, but you're getting power here. It's all coming from that 12th gen Core i7, 12700H processor, you got the RTX 3070 Ti NVIDIA graphics, which really, really are impressive. Now, it can run hot, as I showed you. It reaches a core temperature of about 100 degrees Celsius, and the surface temperatures can reach over 50 degrees, so you're definitely going to feel it on your lap, so I wouldn't use this on your lap. But if you are into portable gaming, you are going to get a lot out of this. And I, I think a good bang for the buck at about $1,780 or so. I think that's a good starting price. Now, I don't have this one particular pricing just yet. This hasn't been available just yet, but I did speak to Lenovo, and they did say very, very soon. So I'll leave a link in the description below for when it does become available. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about the Legion 5i Pro with its 16 inch display, with those RTX 3070 Ti graphics and the 12th gen Alder Lake processor? I am curious to know. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.